Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last presentation, we have seen about the introduction to DES and in that we have seen about the DES encryption algorithm. In today's presentation, we will focus on what happens in that round function. So, the topic of the day is single round of DES, the DES algorithm. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one. Understand the initial permutation, the inverse initial permutation and the swap function and outcome number two, which is understanding the single round of DES algorithm. And in the last presentation, we have seen about this DES encryption algorithm where this algorithm is going to take a 64 bit plain text and it is going to be converted into a 64 bit cipher text. And this 64 bit plain text is given to the initial permutation function and the position of the bits are changed and then the output of this initial permutation is going to be 64 bits. This 64 bits is going to the round function where it accepts the round key which is of 48 bits. If it is round 1, it is going to be K1 which is of 48 bits. Then after processing the input, it goes to round 2, goes to round 3, round 4 and so on and finally it completes round 16. For round 16, it takes K16 as the round key and then the 64 bits are given to a swap function where this swap function is going to swap the left hand side 32 bits and the right hand side 32 bits. And the output of this function is going to be again 64 bits and these 64 bits are then given to the inverse initial permutation function. Again the position of the bits are changed and finally we will be getting the 64 bit ciphertext. In the left hand side we can see the encryption related parts, the initial permutation the round functions, swap function and the inverse initial permutation function. And coming to this side, we can see everything is of key related things where the 64 bit key is actually inputted with the plain text for the encryption algorithm. And these 64 bits are actually converted into 56 bits, which is the key size or the key length of the DES algorithm. These 56 bits are actually given to the left circular shift algorithm in order to do a left circular shift operation. All these 48 bit round keys are actually derived from this 56 bit key. So this is just a recapture of the previous lecture. Now what we are going to learn in today's presentation, we are going to learn about the initial permutation, the round function and then the inverse initial permutation function. Let's start with the first one, the initial permutation. This initial permutation is going to take 64 bits plain text and it's going to change the position of the bits and it's going to give 64 bits output, right? So let's see that now. If we take the plain text which is of 64 bits which are ordered like this, the first bit, the second bit, the third bit, fourth bit and if the bits are placed like this, obviously the last bit will be the 64th bit. Now if you see here, the input what we are giving is going to be converted into binary bits and the 64 bit binary bits are placed like this. As I already mentioned in the last diagram, this initial permutation function takes 64 bits input and it converts this into 64 bit output and what is actually happening? The position of the bits are changed. Let's see that now. We know the inputs are placed like this and how it is going to be changed. It's going to be changed like this. The first 8 bits are placed like this. The first bit here, the second bit here, the third bit here, the fourth bit here, 5, 6, 7 and 8. What about the second row? 9 to 16. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Likewise, the bit positions are changed. Now, if you start reading from here, whatever we had in the 58th position, Maybe this might be a 0 bit or a 1 bit. This bit takes this position. And whatever we have in this place, it can also be either a 0 or a 1. That bit is placed here. So if you do this approach, ultimately we will be getting 64 bits only. And we need to start reading like this. This is the first bit, second bit, third bit, fourth bit. Now if you read like this, then obviously we will be having 64 bits. So the initial permutation changes the position of the 64 bits. I hope things are clear for you. So let's see the diagram now. So we are done with completing the initial permutation where the position of the plain text 64 bits are changed. Let's now focus on inverse initial permutation where it is also going to take 64 bits and it's going to convert the 64 bit ciphertext. 
the input 64 bits is actually coming from the 32 bit swap function. Anyway, let's see the diagram now. Let's see the inverse initial permutation now. Let's understand the swap function is giving 64 bits and those 64 bits are arranged like this. The first 8 bits are placed like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then the next 8 bits are placed like this 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. In this manner, if you arrange, then it is inverse initial permutation. So it's so simple. Whatever we get from the 32 bit swap function, let's assume that it is ordered like 1, 2, 3, 4 sequentially. Take the first row and place it in the second column in this manner. If this is also reordering, this is also permutation, right? So we are done with dealing with the initial permutation and the inverse initial permutation. And 32 bit swap operation is so simple. If you have 64 bits, just partition that into two equal halves, left hand side 32, right hand side 32. Take the right hand side 32 and place it in the left hand side. Take the left hand side 32 bits and place it in the right hand side. So you will be getting 64 bits. Those 64 bits after swapping what we get, that only is given to the inverse initial permutation. So we are done with dealing the initial permutation and the inverse initial permutation. Let's now focus on what happens in every round. That's the topic of the day, the single round of this algorithm. Here is the single round of this algorithm. Let's see what happens in one round. Let's revisit the diagram one more time. What happens in every round? This round receives 64 bits as the input and it also takes 48 bit key that is the round key. Please note here round function takes 64 bits input and 48 bit key. And finally what's the output of every round? It is 64 bits only. So every round is going to take 64 bits input and a 48 bit key and finally it gives a 64 bit output. Let's take any round. Since we are not able to place the complete round details here, we have simply mentioned it as round 1, round 2 up to round 16. Now what happens in every single round? In every single round, this is happening. So if you note here, this is one round. And what's the input size which is getting into the round? It's 64 bits, right? The entire 64 bits which is entering into the round contains the left hand side 32 bits and the right hand side 32 bits. These right hand side 32 bits are just taken as such. So can you see here the right hand side 32 bits are taken and this is actually given to an expansion function. Now the role of this expansion function or expansion permutation is to expand it. Why we need to expand it? Because we are getting a 48 bit key and what is the input that is fed into the round function? It is 64 bits, right? Now these 64 bits we have partitioned into two halves. One is the left hand side 32 and the other one is the right hand side 32. Now this right hand side 32 have to be converted into 48 bits so that this can be XORed with the round key which is 48 bits. So this is actually the key. Can you see here the original key is what? 64 bits. It is also having 32 bits here and 32 bits here. I will just go back to the previous diagram so that it will be easy for you to understand. In this diagram, the original key is what? 64 bits and what we are giving for every round? 48 bits. This original 64 bits, whatever is given to the round contains left hand side 32 and right hand side 32. The right hand side 32 is expanded so that the 32 bits in the right hand side is converted into 48 bits and then this 48 bit can be exhorted with this 48 bits which is the round key. That is what we are dealing here. So the right hand side 32 bits are actually expanded and then we will be getting 48 bits. How we are going to expand this? That we will see later. But just understand the concept. So the right hand side 32 bits are expanded into 48 bits and whatever we get from the round key, this is of 48 bits. So when this 48 bit is exhorted with this 48 bit, we will be getting 48 bits. So this 48 bits actually now to be reduced to 32 bits because already we have 32 bits in the left hand side. So we have to reduce this. So what we are going to do is we are going to reduce this 48 bits into 32 bits by giving this to a substitution box, which is also called as S box. So what S box is doing? It's taking 48 bits as the input and it is reducing it into 32 bits. So if you see here, expansion table is expanding into 48 bits, whereas the S box is reducing this into 32 bits. Now, these 32 bits are actually given to a P box, which is the permutation box or a transposition box, 
where the position is going to be changed and whatever we get here is going to be another 32 bits because we are not going to expand or reduce rather we are going to change the position only after changing the position whatever we get you can ignore this for now and whatever you get after changing the position will be 32 bits and these 32 bits actually are XOR with the left hand side 32 bits can you see here the left hand side is of 32 bits these 32 bits are just XOR with the 32 bits after processing these many aspects now whatever the result we get will be 32 bits because the left hand side 32 bits is actually XOR with the 32 bits after performing these operations so 32 bits XOR with another 32 bits will be 32 bits and these 32 bits are the right hand side part and what about the left hand side 32 part before starting any round we will be having 64 bits input right the 32 bits are just taken here and placed here so that this is 32 bits and this is 32 bits these 32 plus 32 64 bits are going to the next round it means this is the previous round which is i minus 1 this is the next round which is i how many times these rounds are being performed 16 times the rounds are performed for every 16 time we get 16 round keys i hope things are clear for you now let's see what happens here the original key is 32 plus 32 64 bits it is actually reduced into 56 this 56 bit key is actually reduced to 48 bit and this is the round key for every round we have a 48 bit round key now this entire process is repeated for how many times 16 times because how many rounds we have 16 rounds so this is exactly what happens in this round or in this round or in any of the rounds this is what happens in every single round of this algorithm so let's see the equation what happens in left hand side and right hand side let's take this diagram what is actually li let's say the input is li minus 1 and ri minus 1 and the output of the round function is li and ri now what is li this li is exactly whatever is there in the ri minus 1 so li is exactly ri minus 1 so ri minus 1 is exactly li and what about this ri ri is li minus 1 xor with these many things right so what is ri ri is li minus 1 which is ri is li minus 1 xor with this entire function what is this function this function is a Mangler function where it takes the right hand side part which is r minus 1 as the input and this ki key right so these two inputs are given for this function f which is exactly the f function or Mangler function don't worry about this function now anyway in the next presentation we are going to elaborately focus on what happens in this function f in every round and that's it guys I hope now you understood what happens in the initial permutation, the inverse initial permutation and the swap function and also we have understood the single round of this algorithm. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.